Hi class, today we are on Sex and Math Book 4, Lesson 102, and we're going to talk about tenths and hundredths on a number line. So, the most natural thing to look at when we're talking about this lesson is the metric measurement system. Because we have the meter stick, the meter stick is broken down, there are 100 centimeters in a meter, there are 10 millimeters in each centimeter, so... Here is my number line, and what I am here to tell you today is that there is an infinite number of numbers in between each whole number. You guys know some of them. You know the halves, right? We can take each of these, if I can open my marker here, break them in half. So this would be two and a half. This would be three and a half. I could break those halves in half, and then I'd have quarters or fourths. So right about here, I would have two and one-fourth, two and a half, two and three-fourths, three, three and one-fourth, three and a half, three and three-fourths, four. But today, I'm not going to break them into fourths. I'm going to break them into tenths. So Let me do that very quickly right here. We will pretend that they're exactly the same distance apart. And you'll notice there are 10 spaces between each whole number. So I'm going to count them here for you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 there. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 between 3 and 4. So if I've broken them into tenths, right here at the first one, we would say 2 and 1 tenth. Here I've written it as a fraction, but we can also write 2 and 1 tenth as a decimal like this. This is not 2.1. We don't read it that way. We say two and one-tenth. So then here for the second one, we would say two and two-tenths. I could write that as a fraction, or I could write that as a decimal. Two and three-tenths would be the next notch. Fraction, decimal. You see how it's moving along here? So we're going to focus on the decimal today. Because when we're converting between meters and centimeters, we're talking about decimal numbers. That's the easiest way to look at them. It's the easiest way to write them. So that's what we're going to look at today. Our first example says, Santiago is 162 centimeters tall. Okay, so he's 162 centimeters. Let me grab my meter stick real quick so we can look at this together. Okay, here it is. So it's not labeled, but you can see the last labeled one is 99. Here at the very end of the stick is going to be 100 centimeters. So if I put this down on the floor, I'm sitting down, but it goes about to my waist, okay? 100 centimeters. Santiago is the height of this whole stick plus 62 more centimeters. He's 162 centimeters. So here comes the question part. It says, how do we write that as meters? So 100 centimeters is equal to one whole meter. He is one whole meter tall. Is he two whole meters tall? Mm -mm. He's somewhere in between one and two. Well, he's got that one whole meter plus he has 62 centimeters. So compare this 62 out of 100 centimeters and we've got the number 62 hundredths. 
So Santiago is 1 and 62 hundredths of a meter. What do you notice about those two numbers? They're the same digits. All we had to do was stick a decimal place there between the hundreds and the tens of my centimeters to turn it into meters. That's a cool trick. All right, our next example says write the decimal number to which each arrow points. So I want you to open your book to page 650 so that you can see exactly where the arrow points in the book. But I'm going to draw it as well. The book will just be more precise than my drawing. So in problem A, it starts with 8, and then it goes to 9, and then it goes to 10, and what do we got? Okay, so then we're split here. Uh, I did one too many. Yep, okay. All right, so it's split like that, and the arrow is pointing right here. So, exactly where is the arrow pointing? Is it between the 8 and the 9? Nope. It's between the 9 and the 10. So, when we're going to write our whole number, the number that goes in the 1's place, we want to look at what's the last whole number that this arrow passed. If we're going from left to right, the last number the arrow passed is 9. So, we want to write a 9, and then we're talking decimal point, because if we count our spaces here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there are 10 spaces. So I'm counting tenths. So start at the 9 and we can count 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths. So the arrow is pointing at 9 and 6 tenths. This is still example two. However, they show us a much longer number line here. I'm not going to draw the whole thing. And notice they don't have whole numbers labeled. They already have tenths labeled. And then in between each of those tenths, is another set of 10 spaces. And I didn't, didn't get it very even there, but let's assume each of those spaces is the same length, okay? And the arrow here is pointing at this notch right there. So what happens if we take 1 tenth and break it into 10 pieces? we have hundredths. So in between each tenth, this is between seven and five tenths and seven and six tenths, we've broken it into hundredths. So how do we write that as a decimal? We're at seven and our five tenths, but then we've gone one, two notches further. So 5 tenths is the same as 50 hundredths, plus we have two more hundredths. So our answer would be 7 and 52 hundredths. All right, take a look at example 3. It says round 9 and 6 tenths to the nearest whole number. So whole number is going to be the ones there. So we have to decide on a number line. 
is 9 and 6 tenths between the 8 and the 9? Or is it between the 9 and the 10? 9 and 6 tenths is going to be between the 9 and the 10. Same rules apply. We look at this digit. It's a 6. It's more than 5. So here, this right here would be 9 and 5 tenths. So 9 and 6 tenths is going to be right about there, which is slightly closer to the 10. So 9 and 6 tenths rounds to the whole number 10. The next one says round 7 and 52 hundredths to the nearest tenth. So we're not rounding to the whole number, we're rounding here to the nearest tenth. We can look on the number line, and in fact it's on example two if you want to look at it. Seven and fifty-two hundredths is between seven and five tenths and seven and six tenths. We're going to follow the same rule. Two is less than five, so we round down to seven and five tenths. When I say round down, what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of those two extra hundredths. I am not rounding down to seven and four tenths because then I would have skipped the seven and five tenths. So let me do the number line here. Seven and four tenths, seven and five tenths, seven and six tenths, and our number is right about there on the number line. Does it make any sense that I would take this number that just passed the seven and five tenths mark and round it the whole way down to seven and four tenths? No, because it's just this little itty bitty space away from seven and five tenths. It's much closer to this one than it is to this one, okay? Rounding down just gets rid of that extra. It does not change the place that we're rounding to. All right, the next problem, example four, says estimate the sum of four and 87 hundredths and three and 11 hundredths to the nearest whole number. To solve this, we need to know that finding a sum means we add. So I'm gonna add over here. And then I wanna estimate. That means make it easy to do in my head. So four and 87 hundredths, what would the nearest whole number be for this one? Is it between the three and the four or the four and the five? It's between the four and the five. Is it closer to four or closer to five? Think about what is exactly halfway between four and five. Think about money, $4.50. So would $4.87 be closer to four or closer to five? Correct answer would be five. We can do the same thing with three and 11 hundredths. We can look at it as money. Is it closer to $3 or closer to $4? It's closer to, oh. I was going to say three and write four. It's closer to three. And then we add. So rounded to the nearest whole number, our answer is eight. All right, if you happen to have a meter stick at home, there is an activity on page 650 that you can do. If you are in my class, we're going to practice this activity when I see you in school. I have meter sticks here for us to use. If you're not in my class, um, just practice with converting centimeters to meters a little bit more. They're going to see that. You guys are going to see that in your homework as you go through the end of the book. Right now, it is time for you to try your lesson practice. I'm going to have you do that on your own. Once again, if you're in my class, we'll go over these answers when I see you next. If you are doing this at home, homeschooling with sex and math, have your homeschool teacher go over the answers with you to make sure that you've got this concept. 
After that, you can start your written practice, which begins on page 651. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.